The problem with having racism as a sort of national state policy is that you kick the whites out of the civil service only to sell the service back to the white corporates in 30 years time. And this is exactly what's happening in South Africa. Apparently, it has been proposed that we outsource the justice system to big business because big business will bring efficiencies and somehow save corruption, corruption which costs the country billions every year in violence and theft claims apparently is uh, getting too much now and big business is saying how do we make an effective business when everything's getting stolen and burned down every two minutes which is fair enough so neil Fruneman, who is the ceo of sibanye who is someone i actually admire someone that i like quite a lot a true patriot of south africa has come forward with a proposal that the private sector, including Sibanye, will build state-of-the-art forensic labs for the National Prosecuting Authority. And this will, of course, allow the National Prosecuting Authority to actually prosecute cases because the existing infrastructure for forensics in this country is, well, you know, a as always. But I'm on the fence about this. Like, I'm sure that Neil Froneman is a great businessman and he can actually build a great forensic laboratory. But is this what we want as a real country, as a sovereign nation? I'm really on the fence. So let me explain my position. Firstly, everybody's expecting me to say, yes, I support big business because I'm a free marketeer. Even Roman shocked by that. I don't support this. There is a misunderstanding as to where the efficiencies in free market capitalism come from. It comes from competition between parties. If another party provides a service and I can provide that service, cool. We're going to compete against each other. We're going to compete against each other in price, efficiencies, and we're going to try and make it as lean and as efficient as possible in order to save costs, thereby maximizing profits. This is a basic principle of free market capitalism. The parties, when it comes through to justice, have a monopoly. Therefore, there's no efficiencies to be gained by fighting against others. The problem is that the minute you start getting private business involved, that opens the entity up to forms of corruption and capture, which we've already seen during the state capture era. I want to give you an example of this. WHO is heavily funded by Bull and Melinda Gates. We know this. We covered this in previous, in previous episodes. The problem with that is that they then create policy that they dictate onto all the members. That policy disrupts their sovereignty. But it's to the benefit of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. What happens when we have parties or entities like Bill and Melinda Gates, who then goes forward and funds entities like our prosecution authorities? Does this not open them up to immunity from prosecution? Does it not mean that they can come here and actually disrupt the country? Because ultimately, it's their funding. And you don't want to disrupt your funding model, right? Everybody says, well, Chinese walls will have separation of powers. Separation of powers isn't a historical thing in South Africa. It hasn't exactly worked out very well in the last 30 years, has it? So I think there are two issues here. Okay, number one, FC Banye wants to build the forensic laboratory and modernize police stations. That is on their terms. But it doesn't go to the fundamental question of why we're here in the first place. And the fundamental question is, the ANC picked a racial policy that kicked out the whites out of the civil service. And number two, it employed their own cadres. And their own cadres are, let's be honest, relatively uneducated. These are the people that have destroyed the civil service of South Africa. You can give them shiny new toys funded by Sibanya Gold or other corporates, but those shiny new toys will be as useful as giving someone without a driver's license a Ferrari. It doesn't matter what the tools are. It matters who the drivers are. And if Sibanya and the corporates are not actively telling the ANC to become non-racial and drop cater deployment, the shiny new toys will become old toys very soon and won't actually be used to their full capacity. So this whole arrangement is, yeah, as I said, this whole arrangement, it just leaves me a little bit on the fence because I can understand why Sibania wants to solve crime because they are affected by it. They lose money through theft and whatever the case might be. And they're trying to solve it in their way. Kudos to them. But they're not identifying the underlying issue, which is that the civil service is run by retards. You must change that first before you give the retards new toys. And I would agree with that. They do have to professionalize the civil service, but at the same time, it's very difficult for them to partner with business because if they did, it opens them up to forms of capture, as I've said. They can highlight the example of, wow, we'll get business efficiencies. But you can't get business efficiencies. You can't get capitalistic efficiencies. Why? 
Well, because ultimately you don't actually have the free market at play here. You're a monopoly. You're a monopoly of the state. You're meant to be independent. You're meant to be there so that you can apply the laws equally to everybody of the state, regardless of status, regardless of funding, regardless of social standing. That's the idea behind having an independent state and independent bodies within the state. This isn't how you do it. In fact, by doing this, you open the state up to greater capture than we've seen before because effectively no one's going to prosecute your funders why would you that's stupid your funders will just withdraw your funding then you're screwed so i don't really see this as being a good idea the the risk is too high low quality civil service is a purposefully made policy by the anc in terms of candidate deployment and national demographics being represented all over the place this would never have come to play if the anc was non-racial from the start Right. If the ANC was a truly nationalist political party that actually wanted to leave a legacy in South Africa, they would have prioritized meritocracy at all times. And you know what? There would have been an oversupply of whites in the civil service for a decade or two. So what? Who cares? The ANC cared. And this is why they are selling the state to the highest bidder, which happened to be white corporates. Sure, you can see the problem with racialism in the state. It is not something that is worthwhile protecting, is not worthwhile preserving, and in the interest of the future of South Africa, racialism in all forms should basically be banned, in my opinion. You must understand, Ramon, these policies have a double-edged purpose. They need to improve the black majority's lives. But unfortunately, that takes decades. And as you don't have decades, they've got five years. They've got five years between election cycles. So you have to have a drastic transformation in order to show that you've had an improvement in people's lives. You don't have the skill. So in order to improve their life, especially through the state, you have to basically replace one life with another. As we've seen with BE rules, get rid of the old God, put in the new God. The second problem is, and the reason that they've done this in some instances, is that it wasn't an accident. It was there to, shall we say, delegitimize the institution. Because these, let us not forget, these institutions are safeguarding institutions. They're there to safeguard us against corruption, theft, plunder. They're there to safeguard the citizens of the state. In this instance, they're there to safeguard against the very people who are actually damaging the state. The same people that have the power to dictate who's in charge of the protections. That's kind of what the ANC has done in this instance. And it's allowed them to get away with all sorts of heinous crimes. This democratic mandate with this racial bean counting has led to the privatization of the state. Now, us, I'm not for or against it, but it has issues. And for the ANC, it's a massive issue. It's a great betrayal of their revolutionary ideology. Yet they are, have no other choice but to go for it. Just goes to show, short-term thinking is not very sovereign.